Well, as you can see, the fish room's not awake yet. Power went out again yesterday, awesome. Uh, also worked in the warehouse packing orders because we were swamped from Christmas, which is a good thing. Today we're going on an adventure though. Show you new products. We're gonna pick stuff up for live stream. We're gonna do that later. Uh, shooting a video today. Uh, you'll get to see the retail store expansion, the progress on that. Uh, it's been snowing super good outside past couple days, so we're gonna have to drive in that to go get all this done. You know, some of the things I can show you right now, just a quick little, these are the, the new aquarium co-op insulated bags that we're going to do. They're not here yet, so don't hit us up on customer service and all that. We're still a month out, right? Gotta ship them in. These are still prototypes. So we went through several iterations. This, we, you know, even a simple product like this, I've been working on it for four-ish months, roughly, because you gotta have samples made, ask for changes, they, you know, they send it back, all of that. So this is the latest one we tested. It's got this big old zipper. So if you, I love Toomey branded products. I love their zippers and it's got, you know, kind of a big chunky zipper. The problem is this zipper is not that awesome and it added quite a bit of cost. So we're not gonna go with this one because you can see it's kind of a pain to open. Instead, we're going with this more narrow zipper. Now this was originally cheaper and I, you know, I try to always go for the most quality. So I said, well, it took another, you know, th like three to four weeks basically to get this or to get that one. But now we know this one is superior to that one and it opens up a lot easier. If you have two hands, it's kind of a lot easier, honestly. But insulated on the inside, if you're going shopping for fish or you're going grocery shopping or anything like that, you wanna to go to the beach, you wanna to go to a convention, all of those things packs down fairly, you know, fairly tight. One product we're working on, another product we're working on that I'm still working on videos and stuff and this still prototype would be CO2 regulator but still lots of, well not lots of testing, like they're pretty good actually, but testing some things. This cord I think is too long. We asked for crazy long cord and crazy long cord is crazy long. So, you know, there's some of that stuff in the works, but let's go uh, check out, there's a ladybird, the snow. Cause that's where I gotta go next. We're going down to the retail store. So, oh, so bright, adjusting. So a lot of people say that's not that much snow. You know, it, it, it was about a foot, or is, or whatever, right? It's been melting a little bit. It's still really cold, it's like 22 or something out, but the sun's hitting it. And, uh, you know, we have tons and tons of hills. Like, okay, look at those mountains, right? Like, that's pretty much everywhere in the Northwest. I mean, not quite that mountain, right? But that, one, looks beautiful, and two, there's just big hills absolutely everywhere. And so it makes it treacherous to get around. Right now they do a good job of plowing the roads and all of that. And so we're going to be safe today, but still got to take a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of care. And you can see the pond is completely frozen over with snow on it. So I'm sure you hear lots of uh, defrosting going on right now, but I thought I'd show off one of my Christmas gifts. A little uh, Diet Coke koozie, the Alamo beer from King of the Hill for my mother. That's it. So that was good. And then I also wanted to, I so rarely get to tote this product, this Aquarium Quaff hoodie. Legit, I wear it all the time and I love it. They're a little expensive, right? But that's because of the quality. Well, I really like the quality and it lasts a long time, so. You're probably only hearing defrosting. I'm hoping to make some more hoodies coming up down the road for maybe members and, and some other stuff. Like there's a lot I want to do in the new year for sure, but it's been a struggle with COVID and all of that. So really hoping things kind of calm down. We can focus on business well, we've been focused on business, that's all right. We can focus on pushing forward with some of the ideas we've had. So, all right, I gotta drive. It's it's clear enough. Let's see, to the test. We're good. All right, so here we are, the new expansion. Lots of demo went down. Jimmy might be able to find some of the pictures that we took. This used to be a room that was different size. You can see that that was a room right there. And there was plumbing and sink and there was walls right here as well. So you can see the different colors and floor. All that had to change. There's still an incredible amount of stuff to get done. But every time we kind of touch something, we find out it was done poorly and wrong. And so you can see just the absolute giant amount of electrical that needs to be done. We're basically having to redo lots and lots and lots. We had to redo a wall. So this wall, we found a, another door, by the way, there's another door back there 
there was no vapor barriers, there was no insulation, all these things that are going to make for a efficient store expansion. You know, the pictures I'll show you, there was a wall behind this wall, but there was zero insulation. It was just, it was drywall, like the two by fours and drywall on the other side. And so now we have proper insulation. We're running power up top so that it'll be above the water. So power will come down to the tanks. This whole wall is going to be tanks. Basically from about, yeah, stands are, you know, kind of 24 inch. Basically from here where that door is, enough that you can get in and out. Well, that won't be a service door, but I mean, I guess it technically has to be, but it won't be encouraged to be using this door. Uh, but basically from here, all the way back is gonna be tanks. And I think that ends up being like something like 33 of these which these are custom tanks we use in the warehouse. We had more made. And so these are 30 inches front to back, 24 inches left to right, and I think they're 14 inches tall. And so this is gonna add lots of space for discus and plants and other, you know, goldfish and things like that. So you see lots of drywall stacked up there, plywood over there. And so that goes all the way down this wall. They're gonna have three tanks high. So that's how we basically get like 33 of those things in there. On this side is going to be, we're going to move all the, the beta tanks. They're going to be all along that wall and then we're going to build a shelf and it's going to be nothing but beta tanks for sale up above, which frees up space on the other side. So we'll be renovating the real retail store as well. Got a big old dehumidifier we're installing on this side as well. Uh, back here, this is gonna be, I guess, uh, drywalled off. And we'll put a door here. And back in this area, all through here and around this corner, all the way around to here, it's gonna be more quarantine section. So we already have the quarantine section in the store, right on the other side of that wall, but we want more quarantine space. It makes sense, right? If you have more areas to put plants and fish and all of that, you need more space to quarantine. And so we want to make sure that we're not just, you know, having problems of throughput of, of animals and things like that. So that's where we build more space. I guess I should mention the door here is going to be open between the two spaces. And so you can kind of see we've got, you know, a little bit of checklist and a little bit of diagrammy type stuff that, that Joel's been uh, doing. But when this comes out, there's tanks on the other side, you'll be able to walk right through. We're adding more checkout ability over there. So if you're local and you hate the lines, well, hopefully we're addressing that for you. But right here, there's a saw on the way, but on the floor, there is a red line, right? You see this line? It goes from here to the wall. That's about 11-ish feet. And then from here to there is six feet. This is the new Murphy tank. So this will be the, it's like 1300 gallon aquarium that's gonna go here that, you know, is gonna be massive. And so therefore, you know, there'll be this walkway and everything to get back, but the main display is gonna be more from here back. So you get that big 10 foot, uh, by it's like 36 inches tall, so it'll be pretty pretty tall, big massive display tank there. I think we're gonna do ponds like we do in the fish room at my house. We're also considering not putting water in it and it being wood and rock to shop and choose from as well. So we're not 100% sure on that yet. There's some challenges. One of the challenges would be if we fill it with water, we want to auto water change, and so. We have to have that water flow somewhere and it can't be where the public's gonna walk. So it'd have to go all the way up to the front of the store to the left and we'd pump it up across the ceiling is one of the moves we could do and we've taught, thought about. So we'd put a big sump in the corner over there and uh, still lots to do. That's These projects always take way longer than you'd think. It took us uh, five months working every day to build the other store. About half-ish done, three quarters done. And we're, what, uh, two months into this. We're still, like one of the biggest things we're waiting on is the big tank because we have to get it through this door. And if we put all these stands in, we can't come through the door anymore. Prepping as much as we possibly can 
to get ready for that thing to go in. Once that thing's in, then it's a race. So I'm here at the warehouse, just showed up. Thought I'd recap a little bit, because it kind of ended weirdly at the, uh, the retail store. Met up with Robert, found out that the snow is causing a leak down the back wall in the break room. We called the landlord and that kind of stuff, and nothing's gonna happen right now. We're basically just cleaning up water as snow melts a little bit, so that's the problem there. And then also we found out that the, the door lock is broken, you know, and, and so why am I saying all that? This is exactly why I don't want to open more aquarium co-ops. Like, it's all this little stuff that gets in the way of trying to make a video, trying to do a live stream, trying to do all the normal day-to-day -day stuff, innovate on products and all that. Every location you add is one more door problem, one more, hey, the roof is leaking, hey, the toilet's clogged, hey, this thing. That's why if we were ever going to do it, we would, you know, franchise out or, or uh, an employee or something like that. Someone who can make it their own, but under the standards of kind of aquarium co-op and and we've decided to kind of wholesale to at least one store right now we're seeing how that goes but adding more of buildings to take care of is is problematic i think as i said i was here at the warehouse packing but my house and the fish room didn't have power that location you have the warehouse location and you have the retail location that's already three things to keep on top of for all that stuff, right? You got heating, you got electrical, you got, you know, water, you have all these things going on. And that already is like a full, full, full plate for a team of like 30 people. Imagine like, oh, I opened a store in New York, like having to fly there for something. That just seems like I don't have that skill set to uh, move in that direction and keep the quality level where it is. I think I could definitely open up 10 more locations, but with every location that opens, the bar would just go a little bit lower and a little bit lower and a little bit lower. And I think that's what happens over time. So I'm trying the opposite of that, of like, let's just keep the bar where we're at and not add more locations. We're trying to add more places to ship, but still maintain the same amount of buildings because that's the majority of the day-to-day the -day work, so. So I thought I'd show a little bit of other stuff at the warehouse. This is, where we do product photos. And by we, I mean mostly Jimmy. I did help design it. But, you know, a lot of the plants we actually hang upside down because when you lay them down, they don't look right. So we hang them. And if you turn all these lights on, it's like $1,000 in lights to get the right white background. Out here, you can see the warehouse happening. All the green lights that you see over here, those are all packing stations. So right now we have four people packing full time. Then if you look way out there, you'll see people coming down the rows collecting stuff. So at the beginning of the day, what we do is we actually collect 90% of the plants. Basically every plant that's sold from the day before all the way till 8 a.m. We pull the plants and we package them and we put them way over. Like that person, you know, right there is pulling plants. Just pulled one right there. Uh, and those are getting added orders. We pack three orders at a time, then they come over to this conveyor belt. And you can see that one has got, it's getting well moved up and pulled onto a station and more moving up. You can see there's the green liners for plants. You can see more plants being packed. And uh, today we'll probably put out, I think it's something like six or 700 packages. So pretty, pretty good moving crew today. Uh, being that there's kind of the Christmas, there's a lot of gift cards being spent, and hey, there's the aquarium co-op hoodie being worn. And uh, so yeah, that's just, you know, I'm here picking up some supplies for the live stream and thought I would show you guys this messy, dirty window apparently. And just overall how the, a little bit louder out here, how the warehouse is going. But yeah, you can hear maybe all the little beeps. Every time there's a beep, something gets scanned. So. It gets scanned when it gets pulled, way back there. It also gets scanned every time here at uh, a packing location. So dual system to make sure we really minimize any mispicks or mispacks, anything like that. All right, I gotta go prep for the live stream. Ah, we're finally back in the warm fish room. All right, so lots been going on, kind of. Been testing a lot of things, been feeding a lot of fish. Just looking at these guys keep growing and growing and growing with the old Elmer right over here. But what I'm going to show you today is some of the stuff we've been getting done. So this picture got done. This is the one we brought back from Peru. 
this was kind of hanging kind of an outdoor gallery with like bird poop on it and everything and Dean got it mounted for me super cool of him what I will chime in on is mangroves I feel like at this point we're in a transition period this is a good example right here so you've got like this one like oh man that's a sad little guy and maybe that sprout is going to be saved but maybe not and then you've got this one like oh yeah it's on we're doing great and that's kind of the story of this fish room really like this one right here dead leaf old growth and you got the new growth Right? As we look around, we can see some clearly thriving and some not. Like, oof, hopefully this one comes back. See, it's got new growth, but these just want to fall off. We haven't had very many babies at all, and you guys hear me harp on, I need plants, I need plants, I need plants, I need plants. But now we're starting to see some of those baby fry actually raise up because we've got dense plant growth. That leads to what we've been doing to try and fix that. Uh, so we gotta go over there actually. This is a big old tote with a bunch of easy green. I think it's like two or three bottles of easy green dumped in. And then here I have a piece of airline tubing with a little springy thing that came with this device. But this siphons water out of here. Gross, I got like some algae on my hands. So what happens is it siphons water out filled with easy green and it comes over into comes into that device that we've hooked in right there. That line that goes in, it sucks in fertilizer and then it goes through all the water chain system. That means that we now have a way to put Easy Green to every single tote, the 800 gallon, everything in here. This has only been going for about eight or nine days. So it hasn't turned around the world yet. It's hard to see on camera, but I've been writing down kind of the parts from really in here, and I've got some blue tape around the totes testing to see what kind of PPM of fertilizer do we have in there. Because the goal is we don't want it to be way too high, but we also want to get good growth. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the green on this pogo is a little more vibrant. And I'm hoping after a few weeks, we'll really start seeing some of these plants really push forward but I have to keep dosing and testing to see how much easy green needs to sit in that 100 gallon tote to be able to dose out. I don't know if I showed you guys this, but I get, a little, I get these little gnats in here. I'm gonna hang this above one of the totes. And with this particular one, you can remove the bottom. You can see there's some little bugs right there. Not too many, it's been going for a couple weeks now. But that will fall straight into like maybe the Yellow Lab Cichlid Tote. We run one in the warehouse and we run one in the, the quarantine room of the store. So the tiger shrimp seem to be breeding pretty well in here. That's our little shrimp cave right there. I feel like this plant's starting to spread more like that. That's a new growth and there's a few more new growths from the easy green going in. That being said, whenever you run tests like this, it could have, those could have been there forever and I'm just now cluing in, right? And so we need to see over a much longer period of time to see, am I seeing the result I want or am I seeing the result that is actual from it? Yeah, these guys are cool. I don't think this thing is working the way we thought it was going to. See if it's fully charged now or not. It's not even like charging anymore. Either I've got a defective one, so maybe I gotta reach out to the company, but I've had that plugged in for a week and it still seemingly has no charge. You know, one of the responsibilities I feel like I have is if 100,000 people, or maybe maybe it's a bad video, right? 30,000 people watch and 10 of you guys buy that, I just wasted nearly, you know, eight. oh, I did, I wasted $8,000. Something that can be haphazard, like, yeah, maybe I'll just uh, show people that. If it doesn't work out, it'd be detrimental to the hobby. And so I, I try to, you know, I, I tell people, don't buy this, let me test, let me test, let me test, because it's my job to test. All right, well, what I want to talk about though is supply chain is stressed. You may have, if you watch the live streams, you may have heard about that. And what I, I want to stress the importance of that for an aquarium keeper. Right now, we as a, a business keep, well, depends on the company, but like our own stuff, six months to a year worth of stock. So if it's got the Aquarium Co-op logo on it, we're stocking an insane amount. However, 
uh, if it's uh, somewhere we're buying from, most times we're only keeping three months. Even though we had three months of like most of the, the meds and stuff, right? Part of the problem is they can't restock them. So one, you know, I want to talk about some meds and two, why you should have them on hand. This lighting's terrible. Jimmy's gonna hate it. Perfect. Now you'll notice in Paracleans, I only have this small package. We can't get the big package. We've been out for like six weeks or something at this point. You can, you know, find it online. Probably some people probably still have some left. And, uh, you know, our, one of the big important things for us, we're really looking at expiration dates. So like this Marison, right? The expiration date is 4-18-2024. We're still in 2021, right? Same thing. This, and I picked these up from the, well, you guys know. I was gonna tell you guys, like, you saw me go to the warehouse. Uh, and I pulled these right off the thing like we'd be shipping to you today. Uh, expiration date on the Marison, 9 to 23 So that's like two years, yeah, more than two years, right? Regardless, we, we like to keep them very fresh. We are straight from the manufacturers. Now, the point I wanna make is supply chains are stressed. When you get a fish disease going on, you don't have that time to really search around. There are, there are very few products that I say that you guys should buy and keep in stock. And meds are one of them. A lot of times, like with filters, and all that, use what you have. If you have gravel, great, use your gravel. Don't go buy new special plant substrate. If you have uh, lots of uh, aquarium fertilizers, great. Don't go buy more, use that up and then buy more. But meds are something that I really think you guys should have a stock of if you can in your country, so that when you do run into that illness, you can treat it faster, right? We kind of all know that treating an illness at the beginning, results are gonna be much better. I always keep XX on hand, right? I, I picked these up because I wanted fresh things that weren't all stained to show you guys, because I, I do have them in my cabinet, and I have some over by my desk to show on live stream. As I haven't done many disease videos lately, more and more people are asking, what should I use? What do I do? What do you do? We've got articles, we've got blog articles, we've got videos and all that. Essentially, these four products plus salt is all I pretty much ever use. There are some rare times in the store we use some, uh, maybe something to get rid of flukes and stuff like that, or not flukes, anchor worms. Um, but in general, the one I use most often is Marison. I cleared up some blue-green algae in here. I cleared up blue-green algae in uh, an Elmer's tank, but it also fights off bacterial infections on actual fish. And so this one, I, I always have stocked. The other thing, whenever I get new fish, I like to deworm them. And Paracleanse is my first go-to with that. And so it just gets rid of internal tapeworms. It, they do other stuff too, but I'm telling you what I mainly use it for. It's kind of like, it, I use it to do this, but it also does these things which are beneficial also. But I clean out the internal tapeworms essentially. And then I also use, I don't use Ikex a ton anymore because I'm not at the store. I'm not getting new fish all the time. My heaters turn on. But Ikex is great for when you do get ick or fungal infections. Now, luckily in the harder water I have here, fungal infections aren't as common as they were when I had softer water. And a couple reasons for that. Old fish room, very soft acidic water, I kept live bears still. Well, that's not their favorable condition. In their favorable condition, they don't get sick as often and they can tolerate more. Well, in their unfavorable condition, some outside stress factor, and all of a sudden they're gonna get bacterial infections and fungal infections, and I might have to clean them back up with some salt or some ikex, right? Now, a lot of people ask like, well, what, how does Expel P fit into all of this? So a couple things. One, can you just add this in with the trio like you normally dose all at once? And the answer is, I don't know, slash no. I've never done extensive testing to go, ooh, could I get all of these in the water at once and would that be beneficial? That takes like a year of testing with a lot of different fish. I haven't done that and I probably won't do that. Someone else may run down that rabbit hole, but what Expel P does, it's another deworming product. So to get internal tapeworms and, and, and things like that out, nematodes out, right? Most often in the past, I had used this. It was, uh, you know, goat dewormer and, and that kind of stuff and cattle dewormer. And I used it for deworming live bears that got Camelanus redworm and getting rid of extra internal parasites with puffers. Now with puffers, 
it was purely, I know I'm gonna have this animal a long time, I'm gonna feed it a ton, I don't want it to break my heart five years down the road like Hank did, which I couldn't have treated that anyway, but I live in fear of, I wanna try and start a clean slate with something that's gonna be like having a, a, a dog, basically. This is also very good to have if you're an angelfish breeder or a guppy breeder or you're just buying those types of things because Camelanus redworm is very common in those species. Paracleanse, for everything it does really well, it is not great at redworm. It doesn't kill it at all. And so think of meds for fish, kind of like fish for, or fish, meds for humans. Just because we have penicillin, it's really good at fighting antibiotics, doesn't mean it cures everything. And we have medicines that target specific things. What I would recommend is keep this trio on hand at all times, because this will get you out of immediate danger zones of like, if I don't do anything, my fish will die within the next week, right? This is a much more long-term, ooh, I better take care of that, or my fish are gonna die in three months. That doesn't mean that they're always gonna last that long. Sometimes it's just, you didn't notice it until it already been two months and they're gonna die soon because they get fish get really skinny, they're looking really bad. You also might find that something with Camelanus redworm gets those fungal infections, bacterial infections, because the immune system's getting so weak because they're just being taxed by these parasites, right? It's not a bad idea to have on hand, but I don't know your financial situation. Me, personally, I keep it on hand because I go, ah, you know, right here you've got, if you buy all these meds in the biggest packages, you know, you've got 75 bucks in meds, basically, but this is kind of a guarantee for the next couple of years that you're gonna be able to save some fish. I guess I can't say it's a guarantee because you could kill them all still, but you need to spend money on so few things in this hobby. I do believe having medicine, if it's accessible in your country, is a good thing. And if you're in a different country that can't buy these meds, that's fine. I still think you should have kind of a medicine cabinet, at least salt, ready to go. That's your first line of defense. It, you know, if you don't have a plant a tank, salt the tank, that'll get rid of bacterial and fungal infections. If it is planted, you can only do a little bit of salt, and usually that's not quite enough to turn the tide, but it will help a little bit while you're waiting for meds. You just won't want to kill the plants because if you get an ammonia spike, it's all downhill from there. We're not pharmacists, we're not doctors, we're not vets as hobbyists, but we kind of need to play all of those roles to know what's gonna you know, heal our fish. And so it's, it's something you have to learn and know that, that you're gonna kill some fish, you're gonna you know, trial and error and all that. I've done as much trial and error as I can with those meds to at least know they basically work together, those, that trio and you can be pretty liberal. Now, you could dose it every day, like, or you can follow the instructions depending on the med and dose basically every day or every other day. I also do a method where I dose once a week as a preventative maintenance. I also don't change it out at the end most times. So if I'm treating ick and the fish look better on day five, I'll treat day six, and then I won't change that out. I'll let it linger to make sure I get any ones that I might have missed, hopefully. Same with bacteria and fungal. I don't go and change the water out for at least another few days because medicines just come down in strength. Personally, I don't see a need to water change that out quickly when I, I'm not even 100% sure I've beaten the illness. So I, I, I let it linger. I did want to talk about the liners. It's cold out. We, we keep getting, you know, in the live streams and just customer service, people ask all the time, do you ship? Is it a good idea to order? Basically, the way we have it set up, if it's mild temperatures, right? So it doesn't look like it's going to stay frozen in your city very long. Now, it, it could dip to 31, right? But maybe the daytime highs are 62, right? Because it takes time for stuff to freeze. So in a mild situation, your plants are gonna go in a liner. And this is a thermal liner, right? So any warmth that comes from the tanks and all that, it's gonna get sealed up in here, right? Just like that. And then also the most extreme cold temps are gonna be reflected out. Now if it's super duper cold and it is below freezing where you live, most likely the algorithm is gonna go, okay, your average high and your average low, like right now, today I think our high is 24 degrees and our lows are like 15. It's definitely gonna use a heat pack anywhere in Washington. So we're gonna put your plants in a liner still. We're gonna put a heat pack outside of the liner. One, the liner doesn't have quite enough oxygen to keep it going. Two, it's gonna get so hot in there it would cook your plants, so that's not good. What we want is we wanna fight off that coldest air. So we wanna heat the box. So your plants are in here, right? That's its own insulation. Well, you put products and paper and air in a box, 
that's another layer of insulation. If we keep that warm outside, think of it like, it's kind of like putting a coat around this. Well, if I do that and my body is warm, some heat is going to keep it from the coldest temperatures getting in here. The whole goal with plants is to keep them from getting way too hot and melting or their cells freezing. A lot of this is, is a little bit of showmanship of like, look, we used a heat pack. Look, we used a liner. In the extreme case, it does save them from freezing. And there are a lot of states that, you know, Alaska and Minnesota and, and stuff like that, where it does get stupid cold for way too long and we have to use these. But there's a lot of other states like, well, it's only 34 degrees at the, at the low point. The plants are gonna be fine, but we'll make sure that the forecast wasn't wrong and they got too cold, went to 29 and froze. That's basically what we're trying to do. The other thing with the liner is we purposely made them reusable. We used to way back, probably eight years ago, use styrofoam liners and uh, while effective, horrible for the environment, these aren't really better for the environment because they're still bad, but you can reuse them. So now when you go to the fish store and you buy fish, you can put them in here and they're insulated. You can buy frozen food, they're insulated. You can uh, you know, go to the store, buy ice cream, insulated. This zipper costs a lot compared to not using that zipper. Most times you won't see that on this kind of stuff, but it took it from a single use thing to a reusable thing. So that's why we did it. And so this is an example of the heat pack, chlorine cloth heat pack. We do sell these as well if you need some just uh, as a backup or you're gonna ship some fish. When you do order and you need a heat pack, we're gonna open this bad boy up and uh, get it going. And these are 72 hour ones. The next shipment that we get, which we're still probably a few months out at least, they're actually uh, 96 hours. So it'll be four days worth of heat. Uh, this one's three days worth of heat. We're purely trying to keep the extremes at bay. You know, so if it got delayed and it took five days to get there, there's still a very good chance that your plants are gonna be absolutely fine. If they're right frozen, you take, you just got a snap picture. Ooh, those look terrible. We'll send more, right? They freeze again. Ooh, those look terrible. We'll send more. After that though, if they freeze again, we're gonna be like, whoa, okay. Something with your local post office is wrong. Let's wait a month. We'll ship them again, or we'll give you your money back. Like we're always gonna make it right because we don't want a bad reputation. We try very hard, less than, I don't know what the current number is this month, but basically all year long, less than like 3% of plant shipments ever get reshipped or refunded. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna talk about this on the live stream, some crushed coral. I feel like people have forgotten how magical crushed coral is and that, you know, most people probably should be using it to buffer up their aquariums. At worst, it does nothing. At best, it keeps your pH from crashing. And then uh, this is a super secret product right here that uh, I'm gonna do a special we, do, we have the members only show that we do during the week that's like a 30 minute thing. I'm actually gonna give people access to buy. We have 112 of these. We basically brought in for a proto, prototype run, basically, and uh, they passed our test. We had them mass produce and all that, but you, you'll have, as a member, you'll have a chance to get these uh, a little bit sooner. We basically have a cargo container, again, back to kind of supply chain. The cargo container originally, when we put it on the water months and months ago, was slated to arrive uh, December 2nd. Well, here we are today, it's December 28th. It's in the port, and it's been in the port since uh, the 20th, <laughs> and it hasn't cleared yet. Every day, we, we're lucky, and we get to pay every weekday, well, maybe every weekend too, but at least every weekday, we get to pay like $200 in fees because it's sitting there. Even though we don't, they, they say we can't get it yet, but that's where we're at. And so today, tomorrow, yesterday, any day, we can get a call and basically like, this container's on the way. The uh, last thing I wanted to touch on is, members do get a 5% discount on the website, but I appreciate all the support. It's not all doom and gloom. I wanna make sure, Zap, you guys seem to enjoy this type of video. If you, if you are enjoying it, you know, let me know down below that you like this older vlog style. I even got the video camera out instead of like my phone or I want to video more, but it adds time to things. And there's, there is now in my life, there's so many sensitive things I can't show, meetings. But yeah, there's always that kind of stuff going on. I really appreciate you guys. And I, I know it probably doesn't seem like that enough. Maybe, it, I don't know. I feel like I don't say it enough because I'm just running around chasing to catch up. I'm really hoping to actually catch up. A lot of stuff just been going on. And I think, you know, this year we will get caught up. COVID changes so many things. We will be at Aquashella. If you didn't know that yet, we will be at Aquashella. You know, a lot, a lot of irons in the fire right now. And as we solidify a bunch of this stuff, it'll become more like clockwork and we'll be able to focus a little more on 
uh, filming and I want to send Jimmy out to film a few more things. I'm filming a little bit more. You know, with the store expanding, it's been a little crazy and just, uh, you know, trying to develop stuff. So I know it went long. Hopefully you guys liked the long video. I hope you're having a great day. It's a Sunday for you. And uh, I'll see you in the next live stream. I got to go, though. Get ready.